Hi, and welcome back to day four of the Hemlock video sew along. As we mentioned in previous lessons, you can sew the Hemlock tee with either a sewing machine or a serger. Today I'll be showing you how to assemble the Hemlock tee using a sewing machine. If you're going to be using a serger, that'll be our next lesson. Before we get started assembling the body of the Hemlock, I want to give you a few general tips for sewing knits with your sewing machine. When working with knits, I recommend using either ballpoint pins, a very thin sharp pin like these clover flower head pins, or wonder clips. Ballpoint pins are slightly rounded on the end, so they're less likely to puncture your knit threads. I personally use the thin sharp pin because I like to use what I have and I never remember to buy ballpoint needles. Wonder clips are great because they don't puncture, so they're a great option. I would just stay away from thicker needles like dressmakers pins. So you can see here, the thin needle goes through great, and if you're gonna use the wonder clip, you would just clip it right onto the edge. I like to use this, it's a little less bulky. These kind of hang over the edge and they can get stuck sometimes on your machine as it's going over, um, but the choice is completely up to you. We briefly talked about this in the first episode of the sew along, but you're going to want to use knit specific needles in your machine. There are a few types of needles appropriate for knits, which I'll go through again now. Jersey or ballpoint needles. These needles go by both names, depending on what brand you're using, and have a slightly more rounded tip than universal needles, which in theory should reduce damage to your knit fabric while you sew. Ballpoint needles are great for more loosely knit fabrics without stretch fibers like Lycra. Stretch needles also have a rounded tip, but in addition to that, they have a deeper scarf, which allows the thread to tuck more tightly into the needle when passing through the fabric. This makes them a great choice for more tightly knit fabrics and fabrics with a lot of Lycra. If you're getting skipped stitches with your Jersey ballpoint needle, give a stretch needle a try. A twin needle is great for hemming. The two needles approximate the look of a ready to wear cover stitch hem. These come in universal and stretch, so just make sure you're buying one that's appropriate for your fabric. One thing to remember with machine needles meant for knit fabrics is that you do still need to match your needle size with your fabric, so finer knits will require a finer needle and vice versa. Make sure you experiment with needles on your fabric before you start sewing your final garment. Although this description of when to use what needle seems fairly straightforward, often things don't behave in ways you would expect. When sewing on your sewing machine with knits, it's often helpful to reduce the pressure foot pressure. This can help to keep your fabric from stretching out as you sew. Not every machine has this option, but if yours does, it's a great way to reduce drag on the top layer of knits. If you find that you're still experiencing drag on the top layer of your fabric, despite lowering your pressure foot pressure, or if you're unable to do so, you might want to try a walking foot. A walking foot does what its name suggests, and it walks over your top layer of fabric, causing it to move at the same speed as the lower layer of fabric against the feed dogs. Some sewing machines, like my Bernina B570, have a function called dual feed. Essentially, this is a built-in walking foot and is used in place of one. There's an arm that swings down from the back of the machine that hooks onto the presser foot. Once connected, the regular machine foot then walks across your fabric in the same way as a walking foot. I find the dual feed function does a bit better job than a walking foot, so I'm fully converted to this system, and you'll see me using it as I sew. Avoid stretching or pulling on the fabric against the feed dogs as it passes through your machine. Similarly to pressing and cutting, avoid letting the fabric hang off your sewing machine table. When sewing with knits on your sewing machine, you will most likely not be using your typical lock stitch, also known as a straight stitch. This stitch doesn't provide enough stretch to complement the stretch of your knit fabric and can result in seams not hanging properly or popping. I'm going to discuss a few of the most common stitches for sewing knits. Which of these you choose will depend on your fabric and your machine. Keep in mind that when using a zigzag stitch, the center position of the needle is still the zero point for all your measurement markings on your machine stitch plate. You'll need to remark your seam allowance width by measuring out from the leftmost point of the needle during the particular stitch you're using. So here we have the zigzag stitch on a jersey. Um, it's pretty nice, stretches, the seam lays flat. Here it is pressed to the side. 
Again, stretches with the fabric and looks pretty nice on the front. So that is a zigzag stitch. Next up, we have the narrow zigzag. Generally speaking, a narrow zigzag stitch is great for looser garments with ease because with this stitch, you'll be increasing the length and that can cause a sort of an unsightly seam when pulled tight. So if we flip it over and if it's pulled tight, since the stitch is longer, it's easier to see the gaps between each stitch. So that's why it's best used for looser garments. And the hemlock would be a perfect example of a garment that this stitch would work for. Here we have an overlock stitch. The overlock stitch is intended to both sew and finish your seam at the same time, imitating the look of a serger or overlocker. Unlike a serger, the machine won't cut your fabric at the same time, so keep that in mind and you'll stitch it close to the edge. This is what it looks like on the wrong side, pressed to one side. And you can see stretchy, still lays flat, and it looks really nice from the front. Here we have a stretch stitch. This stitch is great for very stretchy fabrics. It's essentially a super narrow zigzag stitch that looks a bit like a lightning bolt. If you find that your stitching is restricting the stretch of your fabric with a regular zigzag stitch, give this one a try. This stitch is actually stretchier than the fabric I'm using it on, but even so, it still lays flat, looks great from the back, and the front also is really nice. So if you have like a swimsuit or something with a lot of lycra, um, this is a great stitch for that. Now, as far as hemming, there are a few options you can use on your sewing machine. Here we have just a regular zigzag stitch across the bottom, stretches with the fabric, looks great on the back. It's a very easy, simple, kind of foolproof method for hemming your garments. You can also use a twin needle. I don't have one with me, um, and due to living in the pandemic right now, I couldn't get one delivered to me in time to put in the video, but it's basically two lines of straight stitch and the bobbin goes back and forth between the two lines. So it's sort of like a zigzag on the back and it does have a bit of stretch. I honestly almost never use them. I do also have a cover stitch machine, but I prefer either the zigzag or this blind hem. So this is a blind hem, which is the same as you would use on, you know, a wool skirt or something like that. And it works great for knits. And this is black thread, so you can see the pick marks, but on the back, it looks really nice. It stretches and it's great for a bulky knit um, because you don't have to, you know, fold anything under or it doesn't tunnel. It's just really simple way to finish your garment. I can recommend stitches for fabrics all day long, but ultimately it's going to come down to you testing out what works best with a combination of your sewing machine, needle, and the fabric you're using. If I'm sewing a knit with my machine, I always do multiple tests to determine what the best option is for me. For example, my machine has a zigzag stitch, a super stretch stitch, a trico stitch, a lycra stitch, a stretch stitch, a honeycomb stitch, overlock, very overlock, double overlock, stretch overlock, reinforced overlock, knit overlock, open overlock stitch, and a reinforced overlock stitch. <laughs> Each with a different purpose, application, and result. So you can see you're going to really need to just see what your machine has, try them all out, and see what works best for you. After testing your stitch out, check to make sure that neither of the following things are happening. Make sure that the stitch isn't restricting the stretch of the fabric. This can result in popped stitches. Check that the stitch isn't stretching the fabric, resulting in a wavy seam line. If it's just a bit wavy, head over to your iron and give the fabric some steam, gently patting the fabric back into place to relax the knit. If this helps and the fabric lays flat, then you're okay. If not, it's time to make some more adjustments. Now that we've gotten the basics of working with knits on your sewing machine out of the way, it's time to assemble our hemlock tees. To begin, grab your front and your back hemlock pieces. We're gonna start by sewing the shoulder seams. So, lay the back out, right side facing up, and then lay the front on top of it with the right side facing down. 
So you'll have both wrong sides facing out and the right sides together. Then just align your shoulder seams and pin them in place. Then we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and sew a one quarter inch seam. And I'll be using my zigzag stitch for this. Now head over to your sewing machine and lay your fabric out, supporting the fabric on the table when possible. going to want to back tack a bit and make sure to remember that we're using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Now you'll notice I'm not giving any pressure or pushing it through. I'm just letting the fabric move freely through the feed dogs. And get that tag at the end and move on to the next shoulder. Now, instead of cutting my threads here, I chain my shoulders, which means I just lift the presser foot and then keep going. Honestly, it saves about five seconds, but I'm lazy and I don't want to cut my seams twice. Remove your pins. These two will be stuck together in the center. Just clip. And then I cut off my threads. Now we need to press the seam allowance. All right, now that we're at the iron, we're going to press our shoulder seam to the back of the garment. So I start by opening up the shoulder seam and make sure that the seam allowance is pressed to the back. And then I just lightly press and give it some steam. I don't like to press my knits too hard. Um, sometimes it can kind of burnish them. And always do a test before you just go full ham on your final garment. <laughs> so repeat that for the other shoulder. Again, pressing towards the back. And then we'll head over back to the table. All right, now that we have the two shoulder seams sewn up and pressed, we're going to attach a sleeve to each armhole. So to start, find the sleeve with notches that corresponds to this side. So here we have, this is the back. We have the two notches here, front, one notch on this side. And lay the sleeve down the wrong side facing up. So the right side of the body and the sleeve are together. Find that top notch, pin that to the shoulder seam. Then you're gonna work around to the front, find that notch, and then pin at the front. And as we align the back half, the fabric is gonna kind of start curling over on itself. That's just because we're attaching a concave to a convex curve. Don't worry about that. Now find your other notches. Pin the back in place. And then the underarm. So you have something that looks like this. You can add more pins if you feel uncomfortable with just this many but this is fine for sewing across. So now we will head over to the machine and sew across here. All right, 
place the fabric so it's supported on your table. Lift your presser foot and start sewing. Again, you'll notice I'm not pulling on the fabric, I'm not pushing on it, I'm just letting it glide through. And you'll want to kind of make sure that you're not sewing any wrinkles in, make sure the bottom layer is smooth. a wrinkle so I'm going to go in and straighten that out. Raise your needle and then clip. That's all there is to setting in the hemlock sleeve. Now we're gonna head over to the iron and do a little press. Now we're going to need to press the seam allowance towards the sleeve. And since we're pressing a concave and a convex curve, it's really hard to press that on a flat ironing board. So that's where your ham will come in. So I like to place the ham underneath Make sure the seam allowance is towards the sleeve and then give it a press. And work your way across the top of the sleeve cap. going to give this area one last press because we have it going over the shoulder seam. And I like to kind of hold in the heat with my palm. It's a really great way to burn yourself, <laughs> but it also makes a really nice press. So I'm going to not recommend that because I don't want you guys to burn yourself. Maybe get a press cloth. It's a really good idea. We get a press cloth. Okay. Now we're gonna head over to the table. All right, so here you can see we have both sleeves set in and it's time to sew up the side seams. So to do that, it's very easy. Simply take one side and fold it over. So here we have the front on top and the back on the bottom. And you can see how this is going to be a shirt now. So we'll start with just one side seam. Give it a little pin. I like to put a pin at the underarm. At the hem. And then maybe two in between. And then same for the body.
Now when we sew the side seams, I like to start at the bottom, go up to the underarm, and then continue down to the hem of the sleeve. And the reason for this is that if you start here, it's very easy to have the seam allowances flip, and then you've got a seam allowance that's heading towards the hem here and towards the sleeve here. So by starting at the hem of the body and working your way up, you're sewing the same direction that the seam allowances are falling, and it's just a smoother uh, pass through this bulky section. So I will go sew those up and I'll be right back. Now once you have your side seam sewn up, you're gonna need to press the side seam. Um, and I like to do that with the right side facing out again. Pull your sleeve out. And the seam allowance is going to be pressed towards the back of the garment. So check out the neckline and make sure you know where the back is. Pull your fabric out. And then give it a little steam. Now when it comes time to press the sleeve, it's kind of a small area. You could sort of press like this. Chances are you're going to get um, press lines here. So I like to use a sleeve roll. I just insert that into my sleeve. Double check which is the back again. <laughs> and then press your seam allowance. Now you're going to repeat those steps for the other side. All right, so now we already almost have a completed t-shirt and this has taken us almost no time at all. So both sleeves are in, side seams are pressed, and now it's time to work on the neckband. So let's move the body aside and pull out our neckband piece. So what we're going to do is fold the neckband so the two short edges are together. Put a pin in there and then we're going to head over to the machine and we're going to just stitch across here across the seam line. So before we press the seam allowance to one side or the other, I'm going to give you guys a little tip. What I like to do, since eventually we're going to be folding the neckband in half, you're going to have four layers of seam allowance right there. So what I do is I fold half to one side and half to the other. That way when this neckband is folded in half, you have half the bulk on either side of the seam allowance. And it's just a lot easier to attach cleanly to your neckline like that. So, press the bottom half one way and the top half the other. The next thing we're going to do is fold the neckband in half, like so, and then press it all the way around. And give it a good press because this is something you're going to want to stay in place while you attach it to the neckband, to the neckline. All right, and there we have our neckband folded in half and ready to be pinned to our neckline. All right, so once you have your neckband pressed, we're going to want to quarter it, and this helps with aligning it to the neckline. 
So fold it in half. Here you have the center back seam line. Fold it in half and then mark this. This is the center front. Then fold the center front to meet the center back. And place a pin in each quarter. Now just note that this is perfectly quartered, so these do not align to the shoulder seams. We're going to now quarter the neckline, so that way we have something to match it to. So take your neckline, lay it out, and align the two shoulder seams. I just put a pin in these, this is temporary, so I can align the center front and the center back. So just walk your necklines. Place a pin at center front and a pin at center back. Now remove the pin at the shoulder seam and align the center front and center back as we did for the neckband. And then walk your neckline till you get the quarter and then do the other side. And now both the neckline and the neckband are quartered. So to align them, I like to start at center back. So your seam line will align here at center back. And then your side seam, or sorry, your side quarter will align here. center front, and the last quarter. Now if we lay this out, you'll notice the neckband is smaller than the neckline, and that's because we need to ease these together. So what I like to do is walk it around here, kind of stretch it so they're the same length. Don't stretch the neckline, just the neckband. Then I find the center and I place a pin. And I do that for each quarter. All right, now that our neckband is pinned in place, looks a little crazy right now. We're gonna head over to the machine and I'll show you how I sew around it. To sew around the neckline, the first thing you wanna do is if your machine has a free arm, oops, you're gonna to wanna to access that. So I took my little sewing table off. Then I like to start at the center back. So simply stretch that a tiny bit. Don't stretch the neckline, only the neckband. Lift your presser foot and lower it. Sew a few stitches in back tack and sew up to the next pin. this down so you guys can see it better. All right, so we're now at the center back. So you can see I have all this extra neckline fabric. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just stretch the neckband until both are the same length and keep that pressure on there. Again, you're not stretching the neckline. See, that's still nice and loose, only the neckband. To the pin. Oop. Sorry guys. Rotate your neckline a bit and take your pin out. 
and then again and see this is the shoulder seam so you're going to want to make sure that's going the right direction so just stretch your neckline i'm sorry stretch your neck band not your neckline <laughs> And keep sewing. Next pin, same thing. And again, see, this is not tight. And I sometimes kind of use my fingers as sort of a pin. Um, they just keep pressure on it. Keep the two parts together. Snip your threads. Now attached. So next we're gonna head over to the iron and we're gonna give this a press, but you can see it's already laying pretty nicely. All right, now we're gonna need to give our neckline a little press. So you can see, even though the neckband was a lot smaller, this is without pressing anything it's still very smooth. So I, again, like to do this around a ham because the neckline is curved and your body's curved. So I put a ham in there. And then I just give it a little steam. And you're just gonna work your way around the neckline. used to sewing around a million tripods um, so you're you'll be a little less awkward <laughs> when you're pressing than I am <laughs> So once your neckline is attached, you can either leave it as is, or you can do a line of stitching around the neckline to anchor the seam allowances in place. If you have ever looked at your ready to wear t-shirts, you'll often notice a double line of cover stitching around here. You can approximate that with a twin needle or do a zigzag. If I was not making this for a tutorial, I would probably leave it. I just think it's nice and clean. This print doesn't really need another thing going on. Um, but since I'm teaching you all, I'm going to zigzag around the neckline. So we will do that now. Head back over to your machine. Okay, so you're gonna put your neckline under the machine. And you're just gonna stitch around it. Back tack and 
trim your threads. All right, here you can see we've stitched around the neckline and the neckline is now complete. So now we're just going to hem our sleeves and our body. Here you can see that. So we're gonna turn the garment inside out and the hem on the hemlock is three quarters of an inch. Okay, so now we have our t-shirt inside out over the ironing board. We're going to turn up three quarters of an inch at the hem and press. rolly fabric or something that doesn't want to stay in place you can pin this this fabric takes press really well so I'm not going to so just work your way around hem pressing up as you go is pressed we're going to go over to the machine and stitch it down i'm going to use the zigzag stitch again but you use whatever you feel like you want to use i like to hem with the right side facing up that way i make sure that it looks nice uh, this is three quarters of an inch so keep that in mind while you're hemming And I like to start right in back of the side seam. When you get to the end back tack, lift your needle and snip your threads. So you can see here, we caught really close to the edge. But if you didn't, if there's a lot extra here, you can just trim that off. So here you can see the finished hem turned up all the way around and stitched down with a zigzag, nice and stretchy, lays flat. And then I just repeated those steps to hem the sleeves. I turned them up three quarters of an inch and stitched around with a zigzag. So now your hemlock is done. That is all there is to this t-shirt. All right, so that is how you sew the hemlock tee with a sewing machine. I hope I answered your questions and you're feeling much more comfortable using your sewing machine to sew up your own hemlock. Our final lesson will show you how to assemble the hemlock using a serger, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you can subscribe to our channel down here, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.